Hey guys, it's been a hot second, hasn't it? Oh my gosh, there's so much that I am excited to share with you in this parent pickup line here on my back or behind the scenes with Crochet with Tiffany or me. Oh gosh, where do I even begin? So, hi. <laughs> Just came back from Pittsburgh doing the Pittsburgh Creative Arts Festival. What an experience. That was incredible. Uh, this is a, today's Tuesday, so it's been a couple days. Finally got my feet underneath me. It took me a, a couple days to rest. <laughs> I definitely needed to rest all day Sunday, most of the day Monday. So finally Tuesday, I'm like, okay, it's time to get back to work. Um, but wow. So went, I, I flew to Pittsburgh on Thursday of last week and met up with PJ. Hi PJ. I met up with PJ and she is one of my followers slash members slash good friend at this point. We There's quite a few of my members that I that are like ride or dies that have been with me for such a long time that I, I don't even view you guys as followers or members anymore. You're my friends. And so it's funny because when I saw PJ, I was like, oh my gosh, there's my friend. And it, it, it's like I had known her forever. And so PJ, I know you're watching this. If you feel the same way, please say something in the comments. But um, yeah, so got in touch with PJ. I met up with some other people. I met Bonnie Barker or Bonnie Bay Crochet on YouTube. And I was so excited. She was somebody that I was looking forward to meeting in person. And oh my gosh, she's so down to earth. It's just, it was so easy to talk to her and so approachable and just what an amazing woman. And gosh, the whole time seems like a bit of a blur. Uh, I, I was just, I made a group of friends and I just kind of stayed with people the whole time. And me being an introvert, that like zapped my energy. <laughs> Uh, I, I met Stacy with Soap Sacks. I love her so much. Wow. Yeah, Stacy is awesome. And Stacy and I were having a conversation because she is a super extrovert. And she was saying how all of this social energy just really energizes her and pumps her up and makes her like even more energetic. And how her husband's an extreme introvert. And I'm like, I think I connect well with your husband. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love the people, loved just the engagement, and I loved how special pe people made me feel. Um, there was, I was not expecting this at all. I was expecting to be, so Stacy with Soap Sacks introduced me to Laura, who ran the entire event. And she's like, you should reach out to her and see if there's something you could do to participate. And I'm like, absolutely. I would love to help out in any way I can just be, you know, help with a or do a class, do a talk, just be there, just anything that I can do to like be another body to help support the festival, right? So that's what I was thinking I was gonna be, was just another body helping to support this festival. I had one class that I taught and that was a swatch class, which was basically my swatch series, but in person. And I'll talk more about that in a second. But I had one, yeah, I had just one class and then I spoke, publicly spoke twice. Uh, once on Friday and once on Saturday. And the topic of my speech was crocheting and knitting with a purpose because that's kind of the direction that I really want to start taking my YouTube channel is having a, you know, doing what we do with a purpose, having a lot of the projects that I choose to put on my channel have a per, like do a lot of good in the world and not, not just be a regular project. So I'm really kind of formulating this new, not a new brand, but a new direction that I am going so that way I can try to achieve this purpose that I feel like I've been called upon to do. And that is just lift people up in this world with crochet, whether I am helping them to 
do it, <laughs> you know, actually crochet, or whether it's through our passion with crochet that we can donate and lift other people up in the world. And it's amazing because just the action of crochet does such incredibly awesome things to our psychology by releasing endorphins in our brain, causing this feeling of calmness, um, it reduces stress and anxiety, and even helps alleviate symptoms of depression and feelings of loneliness. But on top of like helping to reduce all the negative stuff, it really helps boost up the positive stuff too by doing things like giving us something to feel confident about, giving us something that makes us feel like we accomplished something. Oh my goodness. Giving us a purpose inside that can be like a point in living and just existing. And there's just, yeah, so much positive that crochet does for us as an individual. But then this incredible thing happens when we are making something with our own hands and then donating it or giving it away to somebody who improve like it improves their life to have that item that you made one it makes them feel super grateful like wow thank you so much for making something and giving it to me because that is helping me with with my life and at the same time for us who are making it and giving it it's like wow I did that I was able to do that it's such an incredibly powerful feeling and I really want to embrace it and I really want to expand upon that so you're gonna try you're gonna see me kind of go in that direction on my main channel moving forward and I, I think it's so special I think it's amazing but anyways again back to the Pittsburgh Creative Arts Festival spoke twice on that the first time was my first actual public speaking event where I was talking on the subject and I was as I was prepping for the subject I it was a 30 minute long speech I spoke the entire time and it was just it was big it was a big speech and I memorized it as best as I could but of course memorizing it and then getting up and speaking in front of people are two completely different things. <laughs> so the first time that I was in front of people, I fumbled. And there were a few times where I definitely like, um, I needed to reference my paper more than I intended to. I made sure I brought the paper. I wasn't going to make that mistake. <laughs> I was like, I had it right there with me just in case. But PJ was such an awesome person. She was there for my speech and she's like, it's okay, you got this. And I, I heard her and she didn't know I heard her <laughs> until after she's like, oh, you heard me, I'm sorry. And I'm like, no, it helped because it, it made me calm down in a sense where, you know, when you fumble and you're like, oh no, I did something bad, I did something wrong, and now everyone's like looking at me and I'm looking like I don't know what I'm talking about or know what I'm doing. And hearing her say that in the moment, it was like, okay, I got this, okay, just get back on the horse, you know? And so the first speech was definitely, you know, like ripping off the Band-Aid. It was like, you, you gotta, You've, you've got to experience it once. And even if you fumble and fall on the first one, then the second time it's not as hard. And it wasn't. And the second speech that I gave was awesome. It was exactly what I wanted to portray the speech as. And I recorded it. And I'm hoping to get that speech up on YouTube so that way everyone can see it. Because it, it's just it's such a great speech talking in regards to crocheting and knitting with a purpose. So yeah, that's what I intended on doing. So I, I just thought, you know, I was being a guest. I thought that I was going to this event, um, just being helpful, doing my part, teaching one class, speaking twice, you know, hey, um, did not know that I was going to be the main attraction. <laughs> I get to the hotel where this event was happening and I walk in the first thing I see is a big old poster board 
that was professionally created with my picture on it <laughs> right on the top as like a special guest that was speaking in regards to crocheting and knitting with a purpose and I was like oh my gosh that is incredible so special and not anything I was expecting at all so uh, that that made me feel really good and so honored but almost like me like no nah. like Tony was there last year Tony Taylor Yarncrafts Tony she was there last year to do some book signing and stuff and I'm like Tony I get you know I've seen Tony's face on a lot of advertisements and a lot of boards and like Tony I get I, me I'm not there yet I'm not there yet but apparently they thought I was so I was like okay this is this is cool a little weird but this is cool <laughs> like, so um oh my gosh and I had such a blast going over my class too Go, we uh, I brought my packet that I have on my website under resources for um, the swatch series went over this with my students that decided to take my class and not very many people joined my class which I wasn't super surprised because it was a swatch class I'm like great people are just gonna see the name and instantly like skip my class <laughs> Like, not a lot of people are interested in swatches, but by the end of that class, every student was like, wow, this is awesome. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> like, everyone should know it. And so I'm hoping that, I, I mean, I had such a great experience that I'm looking forward to going back next year. And I'm hoping that with my experience being there this year that maybe next year I'll have a few more students in my class maybe a few more of you will come and see me and join me and uh, hang out because I met quite a few followers of mine on YouTube that came and were so excited to say hi to me I mean I met Lynn and she actually drove me back to the airport so that way I could get on my flight and so that was really cool to be able to meet a follower and connect and be able to ask a favor <laughs> be like hey would you mind taking me to the airport and she's like yeah I live 10 minutes from the airport that would be fine I was like thank you so much <laughs> um Jeannie met Jeannie and she was awesome and oh goodness Uh, I remember your name. It starts with a D. Diane? I think it's Diane. I'll correct it if that's wrong. But she was another student of mine, and uh, there was just it was some awesome experiences. I made some new friends that I haven't had yet. Got some new members to my crochet club, which I'm so excited about. And all in all, did a whole lot of socializing and talking and getting to know people and had the best time but at the same time by the time I got home out <laughs> I was done I was so done I was just exhausted so I feel much better now <sighs> Tuesday Tuesday so tomorrow's a big day tomorrow I have my crafters gathering with all my people and we are doing our first ever bingo night uh, Kendra with warm up America she's one of my best friends at the moment like just I love this chick she um, is very outgoing and she orchestrates a lot of events because she runs the warm-up America Facebook group and she showed me how to do bingo online and do it digital so it can be printed out and be okay or you can um just do everything digitally and so she showed me how to do that and so tomorrow is the first time i'm giving it a go and if it's awesome which i think it will be then i'll be doing much more bingo nights with my crochet club members and advertising it to other people and be like come join our bingo night come come hang out uh, i'm also looking forward to doing trivia night too <clears throat> where I get to ask you fun crochet or yarn trivia. That'll be so fun. Uh, on top of that, 
I have a new project that I am working so hard to get out in September. And that is my, and I just did a little short on YouTube about it. <clears throat> so it's not going to be a complete surprise, but here it is. It's a wreath and you might be looking at it like, I don't get it, what, what, what? I mean, it doesn't look very cute at the moment, but <laughs> there's a story. And that story is when I was little, a family friend made my family an advent wreath. And these ties here, you're supposed to tie on candy. And so this thing will be loaded with candies that are tied and the number of ties are the number of days that you're counting down. So this one being for Halloween, I have 31 ties. And so there'll be 31 candies. And every day you take one candy off, get it, Advent. And I'm gonna, I'm making a Christmas one right now also, cause I want to show variation. So the Christmas one is going to look like this. I put gold in it because I thought that would be a really pretty divider. So this will go around kind of like that and also be able to tie candies with it. But the, when I do the tutorial, I plan on doing the um, example very neutral. So that way you can kind of insert holiday here and use whatever colors for whatever holiday that you want to make your advent wreath out of but um, I wanted to make sure I had examples for Halloween and Christmas because those are the two most popular holidays and I really wanted to give you some ideas and get those juices flowing in your brain but super easy project super easy creates incredible memories especially if you're someone who likes Advent and this is different it's not like any Advent I've seen so far and the little loopy to help you hang it. You can have it at home, have it at work. This will be a hit. I'm super excited about it. Super excited to do something holiday related as well. Um, but yeah, that's kind of everything that I've got for you today. I hope you liked my, my parent pickup line. I hope you enjoyed me sharing with you my experience with the Pittsburgh Creative Arts Festival. Um, I do plan on putting together a little video in regards to my experience that I had when I was there. I didn't take nearly as much footage as I should have just because I was just taking it all in next year. Hopefully I'll be a lot better with that. And I definitely wanted to give you a quick sneak peek of a project I'm currently working on and hoping to release here soon. Guys, thank you so much for spending time with me today. I hope you have an awesome day and I'll see you very soon. Bye.